What's going on guys, Victor here. We got giant snakeheads. We got iguanas. We're doing a double invasive species Florida catch clean cook for you today. I got my good buddy James right here. Cooking it up for you guys today. And we got Mitchell Brown. What's up? And James is actually a professional chef by nature, so he is about to whip up a storm. Like one of the most exciting things about this video is to see what he's gonna whip up in the kitchen. So um, we're gonna go on an iguana hunt. We're gonna go track down some snakeheads. And everything you guys see in this video is 100% legal and actually really encouraged by the state of Florida, which we're in. Iguanas destroying our natural habitat as well as snakeheads. Both these species are not supposed to be here. I'll talk about it more as the video goes on. But I hope you guys enjoy this one. Oh, 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 I love it. There he is. Dude, the, the pop is what you live for. <laughs> Little right. guy. Yeah, I love that man. You can't you cannot beat that, even the small ones. Look at that thing. Pretty color. Such an aggressive fish. Crush that frog. What we're doing is we're walking up and down the canal, and these snakeheads, they like structure. They're ambush predators. So they'll be perched up on the bank right here in uh, in grass, sewer pipes, broken logs, trees. And we want to make these real far casts because these fish are super smart. They can see you from far away, generally. So you make long cast parallel to the shoreline and kind of try to bring it right in front of their face like James did. Oh. Oh, I got it. I got it. These fish are so aggressive. Yeah, it's actually it's still recording. You just got to point it. You can see the screen right there. We got that eat on video. So freaking aggressive. He's all wrapped up. Just like we said, they sit on the bank. You guys can't see it on the camera, but you can see the wake. We're fishing still water and they shoot out. They're so freaking aggressive. They might think it's a lizard, a frog, a baby bird. This was on a frog, an imitation frog. Listen to this. Coconut head. They got a hard head on them. Such a cool fish. Dogs on it. Oh! oh, 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 oh that was a big one. That was the one. As we're making these long casts, a lot of times you can't see the fish. You're blind casting and sometimes you'll land like right on top of one's head and that can spook them. You want, ideally you want to cast behind them or in front of them and kind of pull your frog or lure right in front of their face and they just think it's natural. But if it lands right on top of their head, it's like you're dropping a bomb on them. Well, we're currently hiding under this little gazebo. It is raining everywhere, but hopefully after this is over, the snake head should be fired up. I don't know if it's a snakehead. Is it? Oh, finally. Man, we got the runt of the pack. I've never worked so hard for the last three days to try to film a video for you guys. The last two days I've been trying to catch puffer fish. No go. Got out here with James today. We decided to let the first three go for some reason. <laughs> you know, you get in one of the, those moods where you're like, we'll let this one go. We'll, catch, we'll keep the next one. We finally got one for the dinner table. Certainly not enough to feed the family, but um, but we gotta get a couple more. This guy's not very old at all. He's small. He actually looks like a little snake. That's a bullseye snakehead right there. And that bullseye snakehead name comes from that little false eye on their tail. That's one. There's that distinctive thump. That's what we like to hear. Man, I almost gave up on that pipe tube. Yes, all right. Nice. We got two now, we got two for the table. Feisty, man, they are strong animals. Oh, there's one. That was a decent hit. Oh, that's a nice one. That's like a good four pounder. Sometimes when you catch them, they're really light in color, real pretty. This one's probably one of the lighter ones I've caught all day and absolutely choked the frog. This mouth was meant to eat frogs. Names has a giant on. Pull up this little canal on the side of the road. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Woo. Nice dude. Yeah, that's a stud. That's a stud. What we've been looking for for hours. So we pulled up on the side of the road. We're just kind of spot hopping and this almost doesn't even look like a canal. It's real skinny. 
but that's what they like. They like real still water. We notice they don't like a lot of moving water, a lot, a lot of vegetation. Pretty fish, man. Pretty fish. Look at those fins. Yeah, li listen, look at that again. Coconut head. Look at those giant pectoral fins too. Huge. Look, this is the size of my palm. Wow, that's bigger than your first one for sure. <laughs> look at that thing, it's a stud. Look at it, he literally choked that frog. So you guys see this big mouth and those eyeballs that they have on top of their head? They're very, they have very good eyesight. They sit on the bank and um, their eyeballs are on top of their head and if a lizard or frog or baby chick, anything falls in the water, it becomes It gets sniffing. dead. It gets dead. <laughs> Very efficient ambush predator. And their teeth aren't that bad. Like I could run my, my hand around there. They're more for grasping, I think, than, than cutting. That's what we came here for. Mm-hmm. You came here for to whip that up in I, the kitchen. I tried. We're gonna make this thing beautiful. Again. So how, how do you how do you detain this thing? You, you literally watch. You just grab it, dude. They're they're not. Yeah, they're. I can't believe you can just grab it you like just that. Just grab them, bro. All right, guys. So we just pulled up to the first spot, and it's gonna be a grind today. The weather is not ideal. It's probably the worst possible conditions. When it's rainy like this, these iguanas they like to hide. They do not like to be cold. When it's sunny, they'll come out in suntan. We got Mitchell behind the camera. We got Yames from yesterday. We were snakehead fishing. And today is all about the iguana. The first one you ever caught, right? Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm so excited. This is gonna be a good catch and cook. So every single time I've tried to do an iguana catch and cook, it's always when the weather is complete crap and it's raining. And that's literally the worst possible conditions to try to catch iguanas, but that's the reason we're doing it, is because there's nothing else to do. It's too rough to go offshore, too much seaweed inshore, it's kind of crazy. We've literally been sitting in the truck for two hours now, and as soon as you get a little peak of sunlight, these iguanas, they're cold-blooded, and they need the heat. They're, they, as soon as the sun comes out, they come out to tan, so... Dude, they have, their eyesight's insane. It just, look, it just looked like the bank was like just straight grass, like nothing there. And make one more step and they all go like that and just pop all their little heads up and now look at them all down there a lot of times when we're doing this you don't really see them because they blend in so well to the grass you just you basically see the grass move but they're all starting to come up as that as the rain subsides and the sun comes out and the last thing that an iguana wants to do is jump in the water because then they're going to get cold again so they'll go and wait right at the edge of the water until you get close enough to where they're too scared i think they can't see you as well yeah, it's really hard to get him. Oh! It's a little one. He was biting it. He was biting yeah, it? Yeah, he was biting it. <laughs> Just my pet. <laughs> look at him, look at him run around. <laughs> look at him run around. When you go to grab him, they play dead. Oh, not this one. This, whoa, you're, oh, we got a scratchy one. Got him! Sent it. Is it the same one? I don't know. It looks bigger. Yeah, he does look a little bigger. This is fun. They're really, they don't really care about the noose at all, to be honest with you. Like, I just slipped the noose down there. I missed a couple times, he didn't even care. And I just just went real easy, put it on him, and then just sent it. So, we grab them, and we're not gonna dispatch them where we're at. We're actually gonna tie them up. Since they're not fish, they can live out of the water and breathe. We just got some electrical tape, and we're gonna get them nice and calm I got you. before we humanely dispatch them at home. So. You can, um, you know, like when they, when trappers have alligators caught, they'll tie their legs like behind their body. But I don't think it really matters as long as we kind of, like you, we could almost fold his legs down and then I'm just going to, I'm just going to send. That, that'd be a good idea right yeah, there. I'm, I'm yeah. going to just, just I'm just going to wrap times. it a couple times so it's not like hurting him. Just so where his legs are kind of secure. Good. Now he can't move his back legs. And we're just going to give him a little jacket. Bare hands like that. That's it. Oh, one little turn like that. Done deal. He's tied. Iguanas. <laughs> tied they, they really are a cool little lizard. Look at them. They're real walking Godzilla in Florida. And when they're real small like this, they'll be very green. The older, the older they get, they turn more orange. Sometimes they'll almost be black. And I think it has a lot to do with what uh, 
stage they are in their reproductive cycle. But look at this. This guy is missing a bunch of his, um, looks like nails or talons or whatever you want to call it. I think they get beat up a lot. They live in a really rugged environment. They're always in seawalls, rocks. They're getting roughed up. And I think maybe that's one reason that noose doesn't bother them because they're used to things hitting them. They crawl all over each other. I don't know, but it's kind of neat how this one doesn't have any of his nails. We just rolled up on some straight dinosaurs. I've been wanting to catch big ones. And all along the bank right there, one big one, two, three, four, five, six. There's just dinosaurs. I've got like five hours of footage of Vic just like creeping along as slow as you can possibly go. That's what you gotta do with these guys, dude. If I would've I would have given up like an hour ago. It really takes a lot of patience to get these bigger iguanas. They do not give up. I mean he's no monster by any means, but he's that look at him! He's pissed! Look at him sticking out his tongue trying to flex. He's flared. Dude, he's pissed. It took, it took, we've been trying to get this one for like 15 minutes. These things are smart. You gotta make super, super slow, subtle movements as to not spook them. There's guanas in this canal that are twice this big, the big orange, Mitchell calls them big papa swoles. <laughs> We're gonna try to get those. We're gonna hog tie this one up and try to get more. How's your day off going so far? Better than working, that's for sure. Guana hunting. I envy your job right now. <laughs> How good. They are camouflaging. I want you guys to take a second, stare at this picture right here for like four seconds and try to spot the iguana. They are so good at camouflaging and they stay completely still too. So we got one right here. We're gonna sneak up on. Right there in a the little cove. Me too. Woo! You got him. Set that way. Got him! Woo! Got him. We did not dispatch the iguanas on site, just out of respect to the public and you don't wanna just raise any attention. So we did hog time with some electrical tape. I'm gonna reiterate, this is 100% legal. I'm gonna have all the links as to the legalities and the uh, basically about snake heads and iguanas in the description box below so you guys can check it out. And I highly recommend you guys do this yourself because we've eaten them before and they are freaking delicious. You can do one of two things. Take a blunt object, one, very hard fast strike to the head should dispatch your iguana or you can take a knife sever the spine or right into the head or a high powered airsoft gun something like that the only thing you really eat on these things especially when they're this size are the legs so the front legs the hind legs so i'm just going to outline him all his legs and there's a lot of different ways to do it so just find um you know what works for you what you're comfortable with and we're just gonna outline this iguana. Kinda gotta get a mental map in your head. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with the entire um, process. Once I have him all skinned out, I'll show you what he looks like. Basically have him entirely outlined. You don't really eat the feet like this. You do eat the legs, so we're just gonna cut the feet off. It's just a matter of tearing the skin away. So it peels pretty easy. You just tear it away, keep tearing. And that's what I mean, you just gotta make a visual map in your head, so mark them out, just mark them to what works for you. This little shoulder area, this like back strap, there's almost nothing there. If you got a big iguana, like a 15 pounder, I'm sure it's worth harvesting, but that is so thin, I'd, I think I'd even have a hard time removing that. You guys will see, I didn't go all the way down. I did not go all the way down on the tail, because when you get here, it gets very, Thin, where there's almost no meat. You know, if you guys are getting squeamish at home or anything, you know, I don't, I don't want to preach to the choir, but when you go to Publix or whatever gro your grocery store is, those animals have had a far worse life than this little iguana. This little iguana has been on the side of the road probably enjoying some mangoes, um, flowers on the side of the road. They have pretty good lives but they're invasive and they're not supposed to be here. And our state says there's an open season on them, so we take advantage of it. You know, you guys might see a dead iguana. 
I see a protein source. Nobody judges you when you go to the grocery store and pick up a steak, so you can't judge us for going out into the wild. You know, going back to the roots, this is what people used to do. They used to go and hunt their own food. And it's a very lean protein source too. Almost no fat. And in other parts of the world, you know, it's very common to eat them. It's not weird or looked down upon like it is here in the States. You have your two little legs right here. I'm just gonna kind of work around and try to feel to where I can separate around the tendon. So there's one leg. You can kind of see where that joint is. You kind of just cut around that ball joint. There's another leg. These are gonna be perfect little chicken wing type deals. Okay, so now, what to do with the tail? You see all that meat on the tail, and when it gets smaller and thinner, you're not gonna wanna keep that thin part, but this, this is what I like to do for a braise or stew, or last time I made it, I did a jambalaya. You can cut it into chunks, and it just falls off the bone. We're gonna leave the bone on, and just cut it into kind of bite-sized pieces like this. Because right here, you have the one front leg, two front legs. It's time to fillet up this big old coconut head. Honestly, my favorite fish to catch in freshwater. I love these things. Even though they're, they're invasive, you know, you're supposed to kill them. I know a lot of people don't because they honestly make a great game fish. They are so incredibly aggressive and active and they eat top waters. But you guys are going to see after James cooks up these snake heads, how good they look. You're going to want to go and catch them yourself. Eight inch Dexter narrow filet. You guys can find it linked below and you guys can actually save 20% off. Use my code Landshark at DexterOutdoors.com. Right here behind the head, kind of cut into those scales. Very thick scales. And they're kind of awkward to flake because that head's just kind of wobbling around. Get on the spine, tip of our knife, and just go all the way down. A nice sharp knife, make your life a lot easier when flaying a fish. Get your knife on the spine and kind of just work back up. Tell you what, those scales, those suckers are tough. See what I mean? They kind of just like slide all over the place because of that big head just wants to roll around, break through those pin bones in that rib cage, get on the other side of the backbone. Just wants to roll around all over the place. There we go. Break those pin bones free. It's almost kind of looks like it'd be easier to fly in from the top down. I have them standing up like a catfish. So there you go. Beautiful filet. Very white meat, almost no bloodline. That's what he looks like on the inside. From the tail towards the head. And this is a nine inch narrow filet, my favorite knife for skinning. It's literally like snake skin. Look at that. You see how stretchy it is? You can't do that with normal fish skin. It is just like a snake. But beautiful, beautiful, very firm too. James, what's up guys? In the kitchen. This is the very first catch and cook where neither Brooke or I are going to be filming each other or cooking for anyone. So this is a very nice treat. So what are you making tonight? Right now, I'm doing, we're gonna do all kinds of good stuff tonight. We're gonna do some uh, garlic, garlic and soy fried uh, iguana for a little outside of the box thing. We're gonna do a little bit of like pan seared snake head. A little bit of uh, sweet potato puree, black rice, some like summer veggies. It's gonna be really nice and clean and good. Healthy, fresh, a lot of good ingredients. And you guys, before you move on, give my man a follow on Instagram. I'm gonna have it right here on the screen, but it's Y-A-M-E-S-2. His friends call him Yames. His real name's James, but everyone calls him Yames, right? Yames, Yames. Yeah. <laughs> so this just makes the puree like super, super rich. And I would, I would really recommend like seasoning it right at, right at the end because it's going to reduce down a little bit. And then once you blend it up and get all your flavors together. What are you thinking, Brookie? 
I'm excited? I'm very excited. She doesn't have to cook tonight. Of course she's excited. Oh, Woo! I don't have to, like I don't, not here. only do I not have to cook, but I also don't have to film. Best of both worlds. <laughs> Getting a little puree right now, a little sweet potato and ginger puree. Gonna puree it up, check the consistency, check the flavor, adjust that if I need to. It's gonna be a little uh, garlic and ginger sauce for the uh, fried, fried iguana. It's gonna be super simple, really, really fresh. It's gonna have a bunch of cilantro, a bunch of garlic, a bunch of ginger, a little bit of soy. Apple cider vinegar. Yes, sir. There. And you just, if you don't have honey, you can use brown sugar. If you don't have brown sugar, you use regular sugar. All right, we're breading the, breading the little, little iguana wings with a little bit of uh, cornstarch and flour, more cornstarch than flour. I would say like a full cup of flour and like a half a cup, if that's the measurement that you want to use, or you could double that. I like cornstarch because it gets a nice and crispy. It holds well to the to whatever meat you're frying. Gives it a nice, crisp, almost tempura crunch. Okay, so we're doing a little Iguana wings, right? Yes, sir. We're doing a little, just a little play on iguana to make it a little bit more approachable for everyone. This is a type of protein that shouldn't be looked down on. It's very, very similar to chicken, if not almost the same. I mean, yes, it's a lizard, but it's very mild in flavor, and it's just like the perfect opportunity to kind of do a play on chicken wings. You can never really do that. And you guys are always, well, you guys have been asking me a lot what I cook on. And actually a lot of people are emailing me and DMing me on Instagram. So this thing right here has changed the cooking game. I love this thing. It's a pellet grill by Camp Chef called the Woodwind. And the thing I, one of the things I love most about it is it's got a side burner, which none of the other pellet grill companies are really doing. So it's perfect. You know, we fry a lot of fish. We do a lot of stinky things. If you're deep frying with oil, it stinks up the house and you don't want it to fire up a giant gas grill. So you got this little option here. Or if Brooke and I are cooking, sometimes she'll put fish on the grill. I'll put fish on the side burner or iguana, whatever night we're feeling. My exact grill will be linked below. All right, so now, here we go guys. We got a little iguana wings going on right here. About to toss them in that soy and ginger. We got our iguana wings, which me and James have tried already and they are freaking delicious. We're gonna get a little of this. There's a lot of garlic and ginger and cilantro on there. It's just super fresh and nice. Finish with a little bit of fresh lime. Just give you that, like, that nice fresh acid flavor. A little sauce. I'm excited. Just watch one of those things crawling around the bed of your truck. <laughs> <laughs> We're about to eat it. get Big Papa Swole. We didn't get Big Papa Swole today. We'll be back though. We'll be back. It's really good. <laughs> when your dad's face goes blank like that, you know it's good. <laughs> yeah, this this might be the um, the best cooked iguana around. Of all time, probably. Oh my gosh. Dude. So good. Fried crispiness on it that he has is so great. And the like Asian sauce that he kind of made is also so, so good. I really like it. You want, it's so good. good. You want to get every little piece off of that thing. Notice how I've been silent? I can't I can't stop eating this thing. We can say how good iguana is, but I don't know if everybody can cook it this good. Right. Sure you, know, you know what I mean? We're spoiled. People might say, oh, I've had iguana. It's not that good, but this iguana is. Beautiful little, little iguana wing. A big leg? A little baby leg. Oh my gosh. All I'm saying is, chickens better watch out. Iguanas are in business right here. James killed it with the recipe, first of all. Mm. Straight up. Just look at that. It is beyond tender. It has a flavor of its own. It's so good. So I'm putting a little coriander. It's gonna be like a, your main flavor in this is gonna be coriander. It's coriander dusted fish. A little bit of garlic powder. Look at this fish, it's beautiful. Oh yeah. You would have never guessed that that came out of a canal. That is beautiful fish. I've had snakehead before, it's good. So the fish is going down right now. You want to get the pan. You almost want to see some smoke coming out of the pan. 
Like, don't get alarmed if you do see some smoke. If anything, just adjust your heat if you feel like it's too high. We really want that, that smoke to come in. It just shows you that your oil is hot enough and that you're gonna get like that solid sear on the fish that you really want, that nice color. It really just keeps the, the fish like nice, flavorful, and juicy. Are you trying to sear both sides or one side? So I do not flip fish oh, until no. the very end. Really? Cook all the way through. I'm gonna finish it in the oven after I get a nice sear on it. I got the oven at 425, heating up. You know what? So this one's gonna be super fast. It's wok style vegetables. I'm not even gonna toss the rice in there. I season the rice perfectly. And I was originally gonna make it fried rice, but that rice is perfect by itself. So we're just gonna stir fry the veggies and put this right on top of the rice. It should come out amazing. You want that to start like nice and perfect. You'll add these veggies and it'll stop the cooking process of the, the garlic itself. Instead. If you guys are liking this video so far, give it a big thumbs up. Give James a thumbs up. Don't do it for me, do it for James because he's busting his butt tonight and he's freaking killing it. Put a little bit of herbs in there. I got green onion and cilantro. Uh, Trying to add the, the stuff at the end like the mushrooms and the cabbage, it really doesn't take a lot of time. And it kind of wilts away really fast once it kind of gets uh All we're doing is putting a little bit of, little bit of pepper. And that'll kind of finish your veggies, kind of steam them. Lime juice. Tough lime. This is it, boy. I'm just finishing the pot now. What's the green onion? My cilantro. So I just flipped the finish. And this is the fun part. Now we get to plate that part. So this is a sweet potato puree with the ginger that you guys saw me make earlier. This is kind of like the fun part, you know what I mean? Anybody can do this at home. And then you kind of lay it on the plate however you kind of envision it. I'm gonna give it some artsy fartsy stuff. If it looks good, it tastes good, right? That's exactly what it's about, aesthetics. Black rice? Black rice, a little bit of ginger in there as well. They call it like black forbidden rice. Throw the veggies right on top of the rice. Are we going with the fish, guys? Wow, oh. Wow. Lime juice, a little bit of lime, a little bit of salt, and that's literally it. Give it a little toss. Watercress is already like naturally really peppery. Um. It's, it's like watching Picasso paint a painting right there. <laughs> it really is. It is pretty spectacular. Look at that. No, it's spectacular. And that black makes those colors pop. That's the two best looking place I've ever been in this house. <laughs> <laughs> really, set, really set the bar high for us for future videos. Oh, yeah. Big inspiration. Pretty awesome. Everything together, the rice, the fish. Wow, what a masterpiece. It's so good. Um, I can't believe it's snakehead. It's, um, it's fantastic. What do you try? Dude, that was probably the best meal I've ever had in my life. Straight up. You, yeah, that you better was use great. that line in the video. <laughs> Like this is why I leave the camera rolling so you guys know we're not BSing. All that was on video, Mitchell. <laughs> Good. Use it. Yeah, that was definitely the best dish I've ever had. You know, my mom's home cooking was off the chain, of course, and you can't beat that, but this was definitely probably the best thing. I mean, like, dude, I mean, where are you going to get a meal like that, you know? Especially, like, home cooked and prepared. Like, you've, like, 
put in your time, made sure it was right, lights out. It was another nice dinner at this house uh, prepared by a master chef and uh, it tasted like it. I feel like I have so many things to say. Victor and James have been going back and forth about doing this for a while now. And it's funny that he threw him into this, doing this with iguana and snakehead, two fish that people normally don't think of as, you know, top table fare. And it was absolutely delicious. Like, that's the thing. Like, people think things are trash and they just have to know how to cook it properly. And that goes to show how amazing certain things can be as long as you cook it correctly. And it was just out of this world. You did a great job. I almost want to apologize because in past videos, we always say like, we don't eat fish at restaurants anymore because we eat it so much at home, you know, and it's so good, but maybe we're going to the wrong restaurants because he's a professional chef and this was absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so to any chefs in the past, if we've offended you, I am so sorry. <laughs> James reached out to me like a year ago on Instagram. By the way, follow him on Instagram if you guys haven't already. And he's like, hey man, I think we should do, could do some cool stuff together. We're both in the same area. And you know, we've been going back and forth and he's busy. Chefs are always cooking like six, seven days a week. So, you know, since this crisis happened, we had some time. He took me to a snakehead spot. We caught some snakeheads and he had the good idea. He's like, hey man, why don't we do a double invasive species video? So we did iguanas and snakeheads. That alone just makes this video special because I love showing people the natural resources in Florida, which they're not even natural, they're invasive. Be able to go in your backyard, cook a meal as amazing as James did, like a legit five-star meal that would make anyone envious and feed it to your family. That's just so special. And and amazing. I've known James two days and I can tell we're gonna be good friends. And that's the cool thing about food. I know why you love cooking. You get that satisfaction of seeing the joy in people's faces. I definitely applaud you for that. You're a killer chef, man. And then fishing in the outdoors, two things that bring people together. And I seriously have to thank you guys. James is a subscriber himself who reached out to me. Without you guys, none of this would be possible. So seriously, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I get to go out and catch iguanas for a living and cook them. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, unless you wanna say something. I'm good, I'm good. Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> now we out, see ya.